Okay, so what I want to introduce you to today is General Electric's Trip Optimizer. Trip Optimizer is li literally one of the cool, cool products in the rail industry today and certainly one of the hottest sellers. I mean, we've sold over 8,000 systems, not so inexpensive product in over seven years. So it's generally caught on, and you understand the reason why it's caught on, because it does two main things. It saves fuel, and it automatically drives the train. So in a normal train, you have different operators, and what they, the problem with different operators is you have what we call variation. You have a very good driver, you have a very average driver, you may have a very below average driver. And variation will kill, will kill, will kill a lot of different things. Most of all, it will kill fuel. So the best driver will do pretty good on fuel. The, the worst driver will obviously do very poorly on fuel. And fuel is a big number. For example, at a class one in the US, 1% 1 fuel savings is $100 million. So it's a big number. So GE, actually in 2005, we were developing what we call a hybrid locomotive, which was battery operate, you know, batteries as well as diesel. And in that course of that, our, the GE Corporate Research Center in Schenectady, New York, they realized that this product, we can, do, we can build a locomotive based on this, but we can also take existing locomotives that are purely diesel and make them run much better. So we came up with this product we call Trip Optimizer. Two main features in, in Trip Optimizer is it obviously saves fuel. The number is, ranges from railroads, guaranteed from railroads, from 3% to 17%. And like I said, 1% of fuel at a class one in North America is $100 million. So it's not inconsequential in the numbers for the fuel and everything else. And the product is actually pretty simple. It, we run it with our existing uh, software that's built into our, uh, cab, our cab programs. So right now for every GE Evolution locomotive, which there are over 10,000 in, in, on, on plane today, over 8,000 of them already have the product. So we're pushing it to get it on every product. Um, we're not in South Africa yet. South Africa still has some integration uh, with their OBC. So until what, once that clears, but we're obviously here in, in mass numbers because we want to make sure we get it here in South Africa also. OBC right. on board computer. On board computer. Okay. There's an on board computer that they use right now. They're still integrating. Okay. And so they want some time to get that right before they put on a uh, trip optimizer. Okay. Uh, one of the, the, the key tenants is it's not just the North American product. Uh, certainly we're in Canada, we're in Mexico, we're in North America on every class one. We're also in Brazil, we're in China, we're in Australia. So everybody in the world pretty much has it. Like I said, the only place in the world that doesn't have it yet is South Africa with these locomotives. And like I said, it's, a, it's mostly a software upgrade. There's a little bit of a hardware uh, system to it. And the system is integrated into the control system. So we'll walk through the, the setup on the control system. Francois? You want to, Walk her through. So obviously the first thing you're gonna do is press, press that. Okay, yeah. so before I do that, can I just make sure okay. No. okay, press press the continue. Right. Alright. So this obviously is your control acts as your control stand. Yeah. This acts as your display that you would see on a locomotive. Okay. Put Gen Field back on. And you see this locomotive is actually clearing a uh, siding right now. Okay. And you're sitting right here. We're gonna we're gonna go forward as soon as this train clears the siding. Okay. And then I'm gonna not crash it, should I say? Okay. Set up trip it, it, yeah. First. Yeah. We're gonna set up trip optimizer first. So how trip optimizer works is we send data packets over the internet. We set it over a GSMR network, and they come as a data packet for every trip. Every trip has a trip initialization. In that trip initialization, you get four main things. One, temporary speed restrictions. You know, they may be doing some work along the, along the road. Two, use how many locomotives you have. Three, what is the weight of those locomotives? And four, what is the time you want to destination? So in that trip packet, if it says, I need to get to the destination by 1630, mm -hmm. we will get you the optimum speed to get you there at 1630 and save you an optimal amount of fuel. And then the safety as well, because then you- It's safety really as well. You know, it's, it's a non-vital product because we always say, even when you could go to auto control, you're still in control of the train. Yeah. And you'll see even here in the demo, we put in a red signal to show you that even though there's a red signal, you've got to stop the train, because you've got a red signal. Yeah. You didn't expect it, it wasn't in the temporary speed restrictions, but you're still in charge of the train. And we put it in here just to show you that it stops. But once you clear that signal and you go through the, the signal, once you hit 18 kilometers again, 
auto control will again will light up and you'll do that. So Francois here will show you how to set up Trip Optimizer just as a start. Francois? You can just press F8. Exit. Just press it again. Press it. No, what? F8. I'm pushing. Okay, you got it. Okay. Trip optimizer number five. See number five, trip optimizer? Yes. The one below. Okay, perfect. And then number F7. F7 to ID. Train to change ID. And then you can press F2 seven times. Seven times? Yes. We're just going to put an A seven times as a train ID. Normally, that would be a train ID number, okay. 6137 or whatever locomotive number you have. That's seven or press six. F7 That's good. F7, F7 accept it. Okay. F5 for new trip. F4. Just wait a second. And it says, welcome to Trip Optimizer. Accept trip, F7. Accept trip. It does a lot of things to verify you really want to do it. Uh, okay. Good. Okay, F6. It, yes. Okay. As soon as I'm finished, I'll come up there. All right. F6, yes. And lastly, F7. F6 to start your trip. Okay. So now we're ready to get the locomotive going. And so, like I said, the locomotive is going to come out of the siding. Yeah. It's going to go on the main track. On the main track, as soon as it hits 18 kilometers an hour, in the U.S., it's 12 miles per hour, okay. you're going to see a little button that comes up, auto control. And once that auto control gets the locomotive going, F3. Gen field is on. Click it again. There you go. Yeah, this is just like a cab stand you would if you were on a locomotive. So, see, so you're a locomotive engineer now. Hit it again. Top, the top of it. There you go. There you go. Okay. Notch four. Press the release. Yep. Yeah. So, like I said, so we're gonna get on the thing. It's very easy. Okay. We'll shake the we'll shake the cab a little bit. <laughs> Actually, the new locomotive. Somebody was just saying they were on a C30, one of the new G locomotives here, mm -hmm. in, and it's like riding in a luxury car now. Yeah, they're very sweet. Yeah. So you're coming out of the main track. And like I said, once you hit 18 kilometers, keep your eye on out down here. Okay, so where, where is the There it is. You can accept it. Press F6. F6. That's it. And now you're in automated notch operation. Notch oh, you got to go to notch 8, because you always got to be in notch 8. Uh, notch 6, 7, 8. 8. Yes. Yep. Okay. So now that's all there is. So you just sit here, and, and, and the system will run by itself. So if you're a train operator, you're an engineer. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to be in trip optimizer? There's not going to be any overspeeds conditions. Yeah. You're not going to make any mistakes. And if there is a mistake, it wasn't my your fault. It was GE's fault because of the system. But of course, there won't be any mistakes because it's an automated system. And the reason the system is so good is that the system can do 10 million calculations a second. No human being can do that. And the systems are constantly changing. So in the course of a train trip, like say you have a normal uh, train trip, we will do 20 complete recalculations. It's constantly recalculating all the time, but in the course of a normal trip, we do 20 major complete recalculations because your headwinds could be better. You know, you could have tailwinds. It constantly changes. So there's no such thing as they call it a golden run. Yeah. A golden run is the best driver on the best condition that best day, but those conditions are never replicated. Right. You know, like I said, you have a, a, a rainstorm one day, you get wheel slippage. So it's always better to be in automated operation. When we, first started the, when we first started the product, we did it at Canadian Pacific Railway. A good number for us was to be in auto control 40 some percent of the time. The railroads demand from their people right now 95%. Wow. They demand it. So what could the only change in condition be? Well, so like I said, so we have a red signal coming up here, an unexpected yeah. red signal. You still have to stop the train. So, you know, we, we won't do that and we won't go into it because I think you get kind of the gist of how the product works. But it, the, the thing is, you're still in control of the train, even though you're in auto operation. But what we want is, we don't want you looking at these screens. We want you looking out the window to look for obstructions. Yes. You know, a mom stuck in a minivan, uh, you know, on a crossing. Yes. Because if you're looking down here a split second, you might be able to stop the train or at least slow it enough to maybe not kill somebody. True. So. Okay. That's okay. 
Yeah, like I said, of, of all the products, and it's one of these things, our biggest issue is we just can't get it on quick enough. And you know, there are some faults in the system. Sometimes when, because you're sending the data remotely, you know, there's mix-ups and there's lost data. And the railroads hate us when they can't get a trip to initialize because they have to run in manual then, and they realize that's lost money. When they run, when they run it in manual operation, it's lost money. So that's the, trip the optimizer. Are sent by GSM? GSM networks, yeah. The, some some people have different networks. Okay. We actually have a data center in Melbourne, Florida. We send data packets all over the world. We send them to China. We send them to Australia, Brazil, locally. But some of the larger railroads now have their own data centers, so they send the packets. Okay, and that's yeah. better. Yeah, it is. Right. And like I said, every packet is different. Every packet is different. And like I said, so eight minutes out of the say eight minutes were out the first time you're in auto operation you are, like you are right now, see there's a red signal coming up, you would normally have to stop, but we'll go through it anyhow. But okay. <laughs> So eight minutes, you told me that you had 219 cars, mm. but I, I look at it and I feel the stress on the, on the track is I actually have 223 cars, and you told me I had X tons, and I actually have Y tons of freight. Mm. So that's the system. Fantastic. Okay, so I All right. crash. Not yet. You're coming no, up close. Yet. You well, can still stop it. Stop. You can okay. still stop it. Well, how do you stop? Tell me to do. Uh, that's fine. Yes. So I just push just it push up there. There you okay. go. The top motor, you can go into the notches. Notch. Notch. Notch four. Notch four, yep. Notch four. And then the five. And you can yeah, stop it five. still. Yeah. And, and, we, and we, like I said, stop. we put this in here to show you that you're still in control of the train. You're in auto operation, but there's still things that you need to look out. And we want you looking out the window. That's the whole job. That's your job. And what is the driver training aspects around this? The driver what? Training aspects. Well, you, you show them how the whole system works. I mean, it's really a short training thing. We have simulators like this. Yeah. All the railroads, actually, they buy them from Carice. All right. And they run through the same thing that you're going through right now. Only they actually have real data screens, little yeah. real cabs, and they have real cab stands, so they're actually pushing, right, so as opposed like to pushing buttons. Exactly. But for travel, this is much easier. I can't carry a whole cab stand. No. no. That's pretty cool. Thanks okay. For your time. Thank you. I look forward to you putting at least a few in South Africa. Uh, we wanted, <laughs> we desperately wanted to. <laughs>